What's up, everybody? It's the DA here. You know, this particular article right here, the culture war surrounding the rings of power was more interesting than the series itself. It's so true, right? It's so true because this series was an absolute dud because of the showrunners. The showrunners, they just completely stole the money out of Amazon's pockets and took off, right? And you have to ask yourself because Amazon has been working overtime to try to prop up this series and say hey no the series was fine we're happy with it but honestly amazon is this what you wanted okay is this crap what you wanted is you did you want a culture war surrounding the rings of power to be more interesting than your series is that really what you wanted because i keep seeing these people saying ha ah, the viewership is still good yeah you guys that are hate watching you guys are helping the viewership but is that really what amazon wanted okay did amazon just want a bunch of people watching the show no, that's not what they were looking for. They were looking for cultural touchstones, okay? And the first paragraph of this article actually says that, okay? It says, before it even aired, The Rings of Power was engulfed in controversy. Tolkien fans were alarmed to hear that Jeff Bezos now held the rights to the beloved IP and his smog-like talents, especially after it was revealed that Bezos intended to replicate the success of what? HBO's Game of Thrones. He wanted his own Game of Thrones. That's what Jeff Bezos wanted when he said, hey, let's go ahead and make Rings of Power. That's what he was looking for, okay? And he's gotten everything but Game of Thrones. Let's just be honest about it, okay? He didn't get a cultural touchstone, okay? He didn't get something that people were talking about around the water cooler. You know, people excited, people hyped up, giving their theories, what's going to happen next week, okay? Rushing out to buy more of the product, okay? He didn't get that. He got people just basically ragging on this thing, saying it was dull, it was boring. You know, even the critics that he so beloved was turning their backs on this thing after about week three or week four. They were like, man, this stuff, man, this shit is trash. Man, this shit is trash. Why am I still watching this? That's what Jeff Bezos got out of his billion dollars. Can you imagine spending a billion dollars? <laughs> And this is the result. Oh, my God. He was looking for social media currency, and he just lost currency. He lost all kinds of money out of this situation. It's just bad all the way around. Think about it. Jeff Bezos wanted the country, the world, talking about a show like they talked about Game of Thrones. He didn't get anywhere near that. As a matter of fact, he got the exact opposite of that, okay? He got people absolutely roasting this show like chestnuts on an open fire. He just got people talking shit about his show. Like, peep this. Game of Thrones had people naming their kids off the characters. Who's naming their kids Halbrand? <laughs> Nobody's naming your kid Halbrand. Nobody's naming them Galadriel or anything like that. Man, Jeff Bezos has to be sitting somewhere in a, in a fancy mansion somewhere, you know, kicking his feet up, you know, drinking some pina colada or whatever and talking like, I, man, this thing sucks, man. This thing is absolutely horrible. I can't believe I spent a billion dollars on this. And the problem is, Jeff, it's simple. You just hired the wrong people, okay? That's it. You just hired the wrong people, Jeff. Because guess what? They aren't concerned about this. Because these cats have been running around after the show finally aired its final episode. And they've just been doing interview after interview. And they're talking about all kind of bullshit. It's like, whoa. Like this a headline right here is just absolutely unbelievable, right? And look, I'm starting to come to the conclusion that these two chuckleheads, right? J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay. They're just, they're not only bad writers. They're not only bad showrunners. They're just a couple of con artists. I mean, straight up, they're just con artists. It's just one big front. Just a couple of low-level con men, you know, making their way through the world or whatever. And somehow they tricked Amazon into giving them a billion dollars to make a shitty show. It almost kind of sounds like a premise of a television show, doesn't it? It's like JD and Pat, a couple of down-on-their-luck shysters, attempt to pull off the con of the century, tricking a billion-dollar company into funding their shitty-ass show. That's basically what this thing turned out to be. They tricked the biggest company on the planet who has executives apparently as dumb as a box of bananas into funding this complete shit show that's what these guys did i mean if it came out tomorrow that one of these dudes or maybe even both of these dudes i don't know but one of these guys at least was related to the guy from catch me if you can what was that dude's name uh frank abagnale or whatever 
if it came out that these dudes was related to him, I would be like, yep, that's it. That's it. These guys learned the art of the con from the best. <laughs> Amazon, you got fucked out your green with no Vaseline. <laughs> Now you're getting done without Vaseline. Sorry, that's just what happened, all right? You guys listen to these chuckleheads. These dudes robbed you, man. They absolutely robbed you. You didn't get anything close to what you wanted to get, okay? They stole your money, and they took off to the casinos or whatever. I don't know what the hell they did with the money, but they didn't make a good show. That's for damn sure they didn't make a good show with your money. And let's go over it. Like, these dudes knew nothing about established lore, okay? They were hyping up SJW agendas. They were hyping up all the marginalized people of color instead of actually making a show about Tolkien. Then what else did they do? They fired the guy that actually knew what he was talking about. They fired the scholar that was trying to lead him in the right direction and say, hey, man, guys, stop. Slow down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay? We're getting away from Tolkien. We got to get this thing on back on track. They fired that guy. And then what's becoming painfully obvious is these guys knew nothing about the fantasy genre. They knew nothing about the fantasy genre at all. Check this out. Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power wants to bring back Cope to TV. This is on InsideTheHook.com. Let's just check this out all the way down at the bottom. Check this question out. This thing absolutely blew me away. What do you think separates the Lord of the Rings world from other fantasy shows? Okay. And this is how J.D. Payne, right? The, one of the showrunners, right? This is how he answers it. I'm sure there are comparative critics who would be better suited to answer that than we are. Hold the fuck up. Wait a minute. You're telling me that you can't answer that simple ass question about how Lord of the Rings differs from other fantasy worlds, okay? How Lord of the Rings is different from all of these other worlds that have been created? You mean to tell me that you can't answer that question? We don't focus on differentiating ourselves. We focus on what makes Tolkien special, which is the themes that we've been talking about. Do you even know what you're talking about? Okay? He can't answer a simple question like, hey, what makes Lord of the Rings different from all the other fantasy worlds? He doesn't know, okay? He doesn't know. That's why he couldn't answer that question. To me, I like to read between the lines, and that kind of stuff stands out. When they ask you a very simple question, hey, how is this different from this, okay? You don't know because you really don't know, okay? You don't know what's different about Lord of the Rings and all the other fantasy genres out there. So that's why you can sit up here and say that <laughs> Sauron will be like Walter White, Tony Soprano, and the Joker. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because I'm quite sure that J.R.R. Tolkien had in mind Tony Soprano when he wrote the character of Sauron, okay? He had in mind Walter White when he wrote the character. <laughs> So this article, the Rings of Power showrunners have awfully strange explanations for Sauron's identity. Of course, this is written by my guy, Eric Kane. You know, Eric Kane has been doing very, very good, complete takedowns of this particular show, okay? If you haven't seen Eric Kane's material, he has a YouTube site, he has this Forbes, you know, Go check him out. This guy knows what he's talking about. I'll go ahead and drop a link in the description about Eric Kane. But let's just check this out. Now, this is mostly down at the bottom of the article, okay? But I'll get into this. So they're trying to explain why the identity of Sauron was being hidden in this particular character of Hallbrand, right? Okay, so it says here, this was done apparently to keep book readers in the dark over the identity of Sauron along with everyone else. When asked about the changing identity of Anatar to Sauron, co-showrunner Patrick McKay tells Vulture, well, we were concerned about a situation where part of the audience steeped in the lore is six or seven episodes ahead of the character. Yeah, like that's kind of what happens, guys. I'm sorry if you're just now realizing this, but when you've read the books, you're kind of six or seven episodes ahead of them, okay? The book readers just really want you to do the book well, okay? We already know what's going to happen, okay? We're fine with that. Okay, we're okay with that, okay? But we just want to see how you guys pull it off. Is it as resonating? Is it as important as it was when we read it in the book? Okay, because we read the book and we was like, wow, we got emotionally connected to that. So can you guys do what we saw in the books? Can you pull off an emotional, concentrated resonance that's in the actual show? Can you do the same thing that the book did? Okay, that's all we're looking for. We're not looking for magic, okay? We're not looking to be surprised, all right? We already know how the story comes out. 
but can you do what they did in the book? If deception is an important part of the journey, we wanted to preserve that experience for book readers too. No, no, the book readers are good. The book readers are good, okay? They already know what happens, okay? They just wanna see you guys pull it off. I said this way back at the beginning when I first started covering the Rings of Power, that all book readers are looking for is to see the imagination of J.R.R. Tolkien displayed on the screen okay that's all the book readers are looking for okay we've read it we've seen our imaginations kind of fill out these story worlds we want to see that on the screen okay that's it okay even if it's imperfect and not quite exactly what i had in my own head at least we see what jrr tolkien what we kind of consider jrr tolkien to be displayed on the screen that's what we're looking for okay we don't need the surprises. It's, I mean, we know what happens. The idea that the shadow can take many forms was a part of what we were attracted to. The reference to gifts and on and on and on, talking about Anatar, of course. And then this is what Eric Kane says. This is peculiar reasoning. Essentially, they wanted to keep the book readers guessing along with everyone else by fundamentally changing the story. It would be like having Gandalf return after his fight with the Balrog as a totally different character. Yeah, exactly. Like, no, we know that's Gandalf, okay? And we're going to know it in five seconds, as he says here, for eight episodes of a show, rather than the brief time it takes the characters themselves to recognize that, nah, this isn't Saruman, but Gandalf reborn, crit, risen, Christ-like from the dead. Okay, that's all people expect, okay? Just stick to Tolkien. Quit trying to do your own shit. Stay with Tolkien. We'll be fine. Let's keep moving forward. That's what people wanted to see. No. Nah. And then following that, Stranger is the, still the contradiction offered up by co-showrunner J.D. Payne on the official Rings of Power podcast. Says, I want to talk about one more thing on this, which is to go back to your initial comment. Surprise, even though you were sus, we weren't really about the big twist, the big surprise, the big shocker. That was never the goal here. I think we were much more interested in creating characters and relationships and dynamics that were engaging and hopefully emotionally rich and full of conflict and hopefully delight and warmth. Chuckles. <laughs> Chuckles is right. Episode two, the minute you see this guy and he says a thing that Galadriel says later to Frodo, you go, I bet that's Sauron. And you know what? You're going to have a hopefully as great a valid and viewing experience as someone who has no idea until it suddenly happens. If you suspect him all the way, that is a totally great way to watch the show, in my opinion, where you're engaging with a whole layer that maybe somebody doesn't engage with. And then Eric Kane says here, and I agree, I'm confused. Your pain is saying that even if you guess immediately that Halbrand is Sauron, you'll hopefully have as great and valid a viewing experience as everyone else. Yet, in McKay's statement, the showrunners were concerned about a situation where the part of the audience is steeped in lore is six or seven episodes ahead of the characters. Which is it? And it's kind of similar to this, right? Remember this article on Screen Rant? J.D. Payne says, well, we're certainly listening to the audiences and our critics, okay? But then Pastor McKay says, my immediate action reaction is that is no. The storytelling will be different next time, not because of the response to the show, but because of the experience of making the show for us. It's like these cats can't get their lies and their stories straight, right? They keep stumbling over themselves on their own BS, right? Oh, are we listening to the feedback? Are we not listening to the feedback? They don't know. Okay. Oh, we're going to listen to him. No, we're not going to listen to him. It's like both of these guys are talking out both ends of their mouths. It's just absolutely ridiculous. You know what it is, man, guys? It's almost like J.J. Abrams told these guys, hey, throw your hat in the ring. We hear they're making a Lord of the Rings show. Throw your hat in the ring. Let's see what happens. Okay. And these two idiots say, well, we don't know nothing about making the Lord of the Rings show. We never made nothing like this before. Yeah, 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 it's okay, it's okay, don't worry about it. It's just about the experience, okay? You get the experience of pitching a show to a major studio, and then, you know, you'll have that in your back pocket so you can build on it later. That's basically what J.J. Abrams was doing, all right? And then somehow these morons actually got the show. Amazon actually bought into the con game. They were probably sitting around like, holy shit, what do we do now? Uh, I guess we better go read the books. I mean, it's just funny to me, like these guys clearly didn't know what they were doing and ultimately we got what we got, right? A culture war surrounding the Rings of Power was more interesting than the series itself. 
All right. That says it all. OK. And this person is absolutely right. It was way more interesting to see the culture war coming out about this, to talk about it every week than to actually watch the show. I'm looking forward to episode 10 of House of the Dragon. I haven't looked forward to any episode of this particular show. Not whatsoever. So anyway, go ahead and leave me your comments and your thoughts about this whole situation. The Rings of Power is just an absolute joke. These guys conned Amazon out of a billion dollars. I'm surprised Amazon is going for it. But nevertheless, go ahead. Give me your thoughts and your opinions in the comments below. And thanks for watching. See you next time.